episode of the podcast is sponsored by TKD Wear. And TKD Wear are a Taekwondo apparel brand. They do a range of t-shirts and polo shirts for men. And for women, they do t-shirts, crop tops and leggings. They also do a range of useful accessories such as gear bags, shakers and neck scarves. So make sure to check them out at tkdwear.com and you can use the promo code BLACKBELTER for 10% off. All details will be in the description. What's up, Nicholas? How are you? Thanks man, for coming on. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I've, I've, I've seen you going out with good stuff, man. I've seen you going out with good stuff. I like it. Yeah, like it. thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. And sure. you, you mentioned just there that you're back in Jamaica and how things kind of are there with uh, COVID. What was things like in, uh, in Canada when you were there before you, you went back to Jamaica? Well, you, you know, they, the, the government were very strict initially, right, um, with the lockdowns and work from home orders and stuff like that. So they, they did that and the cases went down a bit and then people started to travel more because they're like, OK, yeah, the corona is here, but you know what, I want to travel some more. And then the cases rose again and they shut it down again. Um, then I, I came to Jamaica because my grandfather passed and I was oh, just like, yeah, sir. That's thanks. Man. And I, I was like spending Christmas and stuff. And then by the time it was time to get back to Canada, like you need to have a negative COVID test. Right. And then the system here, it was pressured and we had to like wait to get tested and stuff. And then the next thing I know, you need to quarantine in a hotel for $2,000 before you can ent- re-enter the country. And, I'm like, what? And, and and the good thing is at work there, like you can work remotely. So I'm like, okay, I'll just stay in Jamaica instead of trying to rush my way back. So yeah, yeah it's all right. Yeah. That, I think as far as I know, that is coming to Ireland in the next couple of weeks. They're looking at that, like the hotel quarantine stuff and about it. I think they're looking at like 2,000 two euro is what it's going to cost oh, you. Yeah. So it's yeah. uh, it's pricey. You you have to really want to be here, I suppose, if, you, if you're going to be Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that they're really wanting to cut down on people traveling. I think that's what they're trying to do, get that deterrent. Like, okay, you want to travel? You really want to be here? You're gonna. It's gonna cost you pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think you? Do you think we'll get to compete this year? Oh man, I hope so. I hope so. I'm. I'm, I'm trying to keep myself ready in case something pops up that I can go to. Um, but it, it's it's with the vaccine. I am hopeful, um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Especially like with competitions that have a massive number of competitors, like like the USC can do it because they have like five fights on the night, you know. So that's like ten fighters and and stuff like that. But like with our ITF competitions, you know, it's like divisions of twenty people and it's yeah. multiple events and stuff and the umpires and so it's a lot lot different, you know. So I don't know how they they're gonna pull it off. I know karate is trying to have their qualifiers for the Olympics because it's the first time they're going to be in the Olympics. So I'm kind of like, how are they going to do that? I'm not sure. But let's see. Yeah. Let's but again, see. as you said, like that's kind of, they can even control that a little bit on who's going to go. Like, well, like yeah. you said, I think that's the, going to be the biggest challenge in terms of like for us to get back at a high level is the amount of people that you have at one of these championships at one, and yeah. all indoors. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, going to be it's tough. Crazy. It's going to be tough. Whoever, whoever does it gets to do it first. Yeah, you see, the thing is, like, I, we had the, the World Cup in 2014, right? And I, and I was a big part of the organization committee. So I also know, like, the cost involved in putting on these championships, right? So it's kind of like you can put them on, but if you don't have the competitors to make anything from it, it you know, people are not going to want to throw funds at it, you know? So that's another thing. Like, where do you get back that funding that you put into it if you don't have the competitors coming in? Yeah, so that's another yeah. big thing. Yeah, people yeah. don't want to organize it. And then, like you said as well, even if competitors don't go, it's like, yes, for the organizers, they're not going to make any money and like that's going to be the right. them. But like if you have a world championships or a world cup and the divisions are small, was it really a world championships? You know, or, you know, right. you, yeah, you need, yeah, you exactly. have the numbers to exactly. make it a, a proper championships as well. Yeah. You don't want to be winning a world championship with an asterisk beside it. Yeah, you know? nobody wants that one. Nobody <laughs> wants yeah, that nobody one. Wants that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I suppose to take it back, um, how did you get started in Taekwondo? Where did the where did the journey start for you in uh, martial arts? You, you know, I every time I tell somebody this, they laugh. Like when I was I was about nine, I loved the Power Rangers. You know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers it was my thing. I watched it all the time, and um, I was always kicking up and flipping. I'd go to the beach 
and I'd be trying Mighty Morphin Power Ranger stuff. And my mother was like, what are you doing? You know what? We're going to find some activity that you can do, that you can kick like real people instead of trying to kick me. Uh, and then she found Taekwondo. And she was like, you know what? Let's go here. We're going to try this out. And I was actually going to do karate, right? And but I was my mother saw karate first and there was a price difference. And she's like, you know, Taekwondo is a lot better. It's at least it's the less expensive of the two. So we're just going to do Taekwondo. So it was just if karate costs less, I would have been doing karate. And then I was just started Taekwondo since nine. I've just been at it since then. Yeah. 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 Funny that, quite a similar story to me. I like that as a kid, and it was always mad into the Power Rangers. Like teenage Power Rangers was the big one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I like that as well. But Power Rangers, the big yeah, one, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I wanted. I think it's kind of that thing when you kind of hear martial arts, especially as a kid, you just think at karate, like that's that's what martial arts. Yeah. Is. Like that, I yeah, wanted yeah. to start karate, and then just the way it worked out, um, my dad ended up getting a contact for somebody in Taekwondo, and was like, "Will you try Taekwondo?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. Look, it's all the same." <laughs> yeah. It's- here you are, you know what I mean? So, kick and punch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's actually been, like, that has been a, with a lot of people that have came on, like, it, it was like that, the Power Rangers, the... The Power yeah. The yeah. Ninja, Ninja Turtles kind of stuff, saw that and just wanted yeah, to try yeah. it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was, I, I mean, that, that was, I want to say 22 years ago, 21, 22 years ago, and I think I've, I don't think I've stopped training since yeah. you know like consistently i mean uh, you know it's christmas and you take christmas break and stuff but like to stop training nah, i've never never done it yeah yeah that's it like i think yeah i've been the same but yeah it's just like if you think about like that's a lot of like if you imagine if you like, that's a lot of days you know what i mean that's a lot of training sessions it's, in a row it's like a it's hard to think about yep. it you know yeah yep. like yeah like yeah like obviously it does sound like a lot 22 years or, or whatever but then, like you said, when you think of it in terms of like the training sessions, like how do you imagine sessions. trying to put a number on the training sessions you've done? Like, you know, yeah, that's probably a, you, you couldn't, you know. It, I mean, you, you could try best case. Like I know when I started, we, I trained three days a week and then you'd have to like go back. Okay, let's say you're this amount of weeks and get a number on it. But yeah, so many training sessions. And then like when, when it's time to um, to compete at like a, a, a world championships or stuff like the training time increases, right? Because yeah. I, I remember like Kenneth and Edwards and I were in New Jersey training with Master Bernard for um, the world championships and stuff. And we we're doing ITF, we we're doing WTF at the same time, right? So our, our training was like, okay, we train in the morning, we train in the afternoon, okay, we train in the evening and we do a strength program. I would train three, four sessions for the day that time, you know? So that that would add up to even more yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's the thing yeah so many and did you do any other sports when you were a kid or was it just you started taekwondo i i i played cricket okay yeah you know i i mean you know if i was talking to you're irish right so you would know cricket yeah you know if i was talking to like some other people like cricket what's that no, it's not baseball yeah so i played cricket there's a lot of for... irish people there's a lot of irish people who would be like that well if only I've oh got... yeah I don't mind cricket. Yeah, I don't mind cricket. I okay, watch a bit of okay. cricket. I watch a bit of cricket now and again. Um, yeah. Oh so. yeah, 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 yeah. Myself. Yeah, I played some cricket when I was younger. Um, I, I was gonna do track and field, and then it was kind of a toss up between track and field and taekwondo. And I was like, oh, I'm in love with taekwondo, so I'm gonna do taekwondo. But yeah, I played cricket in high school for about five years or so. Yeah. Were you a pitcher or is I bowler or batter? Sorry, bowler. Or batter. I. I I, I, I did both. I was an all-rounder, right? Oh. So I, I, I did some spin bowling and I batted in the middle order. So, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Like, that's what we find the born. I don't mind it. What? I, don't, I don't mind cricket, you know? Yeah. What, what Did you do anything? Did you do any sports apart from... Yeah, I did. Um, I, suppose, uh, I don't know if you've heard of... Uh, have you heard of hurling? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like the Gaelic games here in Ireland. Yeah, so I played hurling. I played soccer. And there was a big thing in Taekwondo, there were the, the three things I really did when I was a, was a kid. And then it got yeah. to a point where uh, I had to, I went to my first European Championships and I was still playing hurling. I did one more year of hurling and then all the guys who kind of won on the team were only doing Taekwondo and they did a bit of kickboxing. So I kind of yeah. was feeling like, if I want to win, I need to go 100% into it's just this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what happens, you know, yeah. But uh, yeah, sometimes you miss playing other sports a bit, but then it's kind of like you said, like I said, it takes away from... Yeah, it does take away. 
Yeah. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard about hurling, actually, like um, Jason Mackay, who is um, who was the captain of our national team for a long time. He's actually Irish, who lives in Jamaica now. So um, he was like, hey, I, he was in Ireland. And he's like, I went to this massive event. And I'm like, massive event? Yeah, there's so many people who are playing hurling. I'm like, hurling? What's that? <laughs> he kind of explained to me, I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. funny, yeah. <laughs> It's a crazy game. It's good. I, yeah. I I I always think like that. It is funny when people who don't know what it is, like because like here in Ireland, there's it's probably like that. Same with cricket. There's some degrees. So you just like everybody knows what it is. Everybody knows the yeah. rules, and you know even people yeah. like, who don't even have an in, like who don't have an interest in it, like they know what it is. They know the rules. They know how to play yeah. it. They know who's good. Yeah. Um. And like somebody else, like like it's like if you just show it to somebody trying to figure it out, they they, they always like like what is this? like how <laughs> what do, is this? How do you win this game? But like that to Irish people is like it seems pure obvious, like totally obvious how, yeah. you, how you play. Yeah, yeah, you grew up seeing a thing, that's why. Yeah. So then in terms of competition, like did you start competing when you started the Taekwondo? Did you start competing straight away? Was that a thing for you, or were you training for a while and just enjoying yeah learning the different types? I mean I mean we 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 have lo- our local competitions is a mixed competition, right? So it's not our organization isn't big enough, or at the time wasn't big enough to have just ITF Taekwondo, right? So we had um, competition with a lot of karate people because there's a big karate following here in Jamaica. Um, people breaking off from traditional arts, forming their own arts and stuff and stuff. And then a big part of tournaments was uh, an earner, right? So people would invite everybody and, and stuff. So I did that when I was younger. Um, I didn't do like an all ITF competition until I was, I, I was junior black belt or so. Okay. So when I was junior black belt, I went to um, Master Suarez um, in New York as a tour, the Queen's Taekwondo Open. I think that was the first, 2003 was the first time that I competed in an all ITF event. And I was like, wait, everyone here is ITF. You know, it was very foreign yeah. to me. Like, there are no karate people. There are no kickboxing people. What's going on, you know? So, yeah, since then, that's when I started and just been going ever since. Yeah. And and then I've dabbled a lot, or in in different forms now that I've competed like WT, ITF as you know is my major art. Uh, I've done karate competitions. I've done kickboxing, of course. So yeah, yeah. So so then in terms like so, if it, when it was mixed, what were the rules like? Did it depend who was organizing? If it was a taekwondo guy yeah, yeah, organizing, yeah. it was the taekwondo rules. Yeah. If it was the karate guy yeah. organizing, it's the crap. That's exactly oh, right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we, 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 because most of, we had one ITF competition for the year that our body organized. And then we had like six karate competitions. So most of the competition, we were fighting points fighting. Okay. So we would only do continuous ITF rules at our competition. And then outside of that, you would always be, ah, oh, point sparring, stop, point. So we, 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 we had to develop that style of fighting a lot more because we competed in that style more than even ITF. Yeah. Do you, do you feel it helped you though? Like the competing across different styles even at that time? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So much. Like I remember when um I just started doing let's say WT for the for example, right? And um they do this this roundhouse kick, this turning kick off the back leg at the time. Like now it's a lot different. They're sword fighting, but um this turning kick off the back leg and we weren't doing it in ITF, right? We were doing a lot of um, yop chegis and punching forward, right? We were doing a whole lot of that. And then I came and I was doing some turning kicks and people were like, ah, oh, getting hit. And they're, they, it's almost like they were like, what is he doing? Why is he hitting me off the back leg? This is a front yeah. leg fighting style, you know? So people couldn't understand what was happening, you know? So, so that really helped. And I remember I was, I was fighting in, uh, maybe in Spain at the World Cup and I went to sudden death. And when I went to sudden death, I just felt like I was doing points fighting. Yeah. You know, and, and and it was just like, okay, yeah, this is points fighting. I can do this. I do this all the time, right? And I just, and it was just clean. It was, so it, it, so bringing all of those things into that one area of fighting really, really helped. Yeah. So but then again, like if they cross over or between them and, 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 and do well, you have to have like, I suppose, so the, if you have strong basics, like you can cross over well, you know what I mean? Like if you have a good yeah. foundation yeah. in one, they do, you can cross over well. Um. So then, like, when you were training, started of training at nine, then did it, how long did it take you? How long were you training before you got the black belt then? I took, I, st- I think I took, like, five years to get the black belt. Yeah. I think yeah. Early. 
yeah. fairly standard five years. I think it's kind of yeah, yeah. what it about takes. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think at Blue Belt I started to like play a lot more a lot more cricket, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, training a little bit less, playing more cricket and and stuff at Blue Belt, and um, then my 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 instructor was like, um, dude, you need to pick it up. What's going on? My mother got involved, and you know, I got a talking to and then after that I, I i caught up right so yeah, yeah five years yeah were you ever a pattern were you ever, were you ever a patterns guy or have you always been you know you know when i started in 2004 i the first world cup i was a junior black belt i won bronze as a first degree right in patterns so i did a lot of patterns but then i i i joined this we have a combined martial arts team right where we we have fighters from different arts, karate guys, kickboxing guys and stuff who um, compete together on a team and stuff, right? And then I joined that team and everybody were just spars. And then I stopped doing patterns. But I did do a lot of patterns. I like patterns. You know, I just stopped training when sometimes everybody wants to be a big, tough guy. And you're like, oh, sparring is the thing. You know, you hit people and stuff. Patterns. Yeah, but I wish I didn't do that, actually. Because yeah. I do really like patterns, yeah. You see yourself going back to patterns at some point? You see, it's hard because I'm fifth degree now, right? And like, there's okay. no way you go into that category. Maybe for fun. I'll probably do it for fun. Yeah. I probably will. The next competition, the next major competition, I'm going to fourth the sixth degree patterns. Yeah. yeah. That was quite, like, I used to always compete in patterns and sparring. And then I got to, I did one at kind of fourth degree. And then I like, did do it again like you said like trying to again trying to do both and do really well like it's like when you're going yeah. against guys like uh like lillian dule like and he's doing just patterns and all yeah. his times in patterns and you're trying to split your time between patterns and sparring and like, sparring yeah probably not going to do that so then it's like well i'm probably wasting my time doing the patterns i'll just put all my time into the sparring so like that yeah. maybe i'll go back to patterns at some point in time but yeah. like like that's a tough division to be going into you know to, if you're not going to give it 100 percent yeah, like now, if it, that's the thing, right? If I go into patterns now, I'm going into patterns not expecting anything. Yeah. Because I know those guys, how, how great they are. Like, they're so good. Like, they're so precise. They're so sharp. I'm like, it takes so much to get to that level, you know? Like, there's no way. Or, I mean, there's a way. There, there are people who do it, who balance both. And, and, and like, Maxime does pretty well doing pattern and sparring and stuff and looking. But I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's been the only one for a while, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Like that, that, when you, especially when you look at like the junior divisions, there's people who do it, no problem. But once you get to the senior divisions, like like he's one of a few, and the people you do, you see do both tend to like not win both. Like he's one of the few no, that yeah, did both and win and win in both. And win well, both. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah, a savage guy. And so then, when was the first time then you kind of developed then and started to compete, uh, like internationally then? Yeah. So I. I in 2000, and, I want to say five, I think it's 2005, 2006, we had a junior world championships in Honduras. Oh, yeah. And yeah. That, that was the first time I went to the international level. So it's funny, right? Because this is my first exposure to the world championships, right? And so we're on this tiny island of Jamaica and I'm training so hard and I'm sweating and I'm, when I spar, I look so good and I'm like, I can go. This is going to be a cakewalk. And then... I get to the championship and I'm like, wow, what, what, what is going on? I lost first round. I, I, I didn't know what hit me. Like it was just, I didn't know that there were levels to go up. Yeah. You know, uh, when I saw that level, I was like, oh my God, I have so much, so much work to do. So much work. Like that, that was it coming back. I wasn't even discouraged. I, I, I wasn't disappointed or anything. I was just like, okay, that was good for me. I have so much levels to go up, man. And so, yeah, that was the first time junior world championships, Honduras. I got my ass kicked. I, I don't even know who kicked my ass. I just know I got my ass kicked. And, and that was like, oof, I hope not. I hope not for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I think that that is definitely a thing. I know like for me, um, I I don't necessarily thought it was going to maybe thought I was going to win or anything, but it was in that kind of thing of like, gosh, I'm sure I could do all right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, could, I could do all right, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you go there and you're kind of like, nah, I would 
it's like looking back and I was like, what was I thinking? Like I had a prayer, I had a chance of winning. You know? Same. Like, like, Same. Uh, like, like, like even, even then, right? Like, and I didn't like, like, no, I prepare myself and not me prepare myself. I'm prepared. I make sure I fit into the weight category that I feel best at that time. I was just like, okay, well, I'm at this weight. That's what I'm going to fight in. And then I got there and everybody was like oh, big. And I'm like, what is going on? So yeah, I, I didn't have a chance. I really didn't have a chance. Yeah. And then when you, when you, like you said, when you come back, you kind of, I think you, you kind of feel like that, like, there's a there's an excitement that you're trying and after that though because you, you kind of yeah, be, yeah. You want you want to do that again it's like when's the next one i want to get there mm-hmm. again and and, and experience yeah. that again and then that kind of that's the kind of the make or break point then of you know are you going like are you going to pick up your training or do you just kind of want like some people will go the other way and go no, i don't really enjoy this book yeah, yeah 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 no for me it was like it, it was kind of like my first competition like I, I was nine, right? It was my first competition. I was at Yellow Belt. I went there into, I, I was at my dojang and I was I was doing some great sparring. I went in there in the tournament and I just, I, I was so nervous. I, I froze. I couldn't move. I lost to a girl. And I, I was like, wow, I just lost to a girl. Maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. You know, but it was very humbling. Yeah. You know, it was very humbling. And my instructor came to me and he said, don't worry, your time will come. You just have to up the training. And for me, it was just like, okay, I need to go and do more and do more and do more. Versus I know people who have like had that kind of experience where they're like, wow, I was outclassed. I was beaten. And they're just like, okay, I have failed and just stopped, you know? So yeah. it went the other way for me both times. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. Yeah. Could it, it's kind of an interesting thing when you put it like that, actually. It is like so some, to some degrees that go into a major championships like that can be like starting again to some degree. You know, it's like starting again, like a, like an earlier, it can be like a new journey starts, you know, like you've had like one yeah, journey yeah. from white belt to where you are then. And then it's like a new one starts once yeah, you experience yeah, exactly. that. Yeah. yeah. So then like, when did you first start? So when did you get a, start to get a win? When did it, when did it, when did it turn around for you? So, uh, in, I want to say in in 2008, I went to the Pan Am Games in Brazil, and it it was a massive. There are so many people like and and when you go to South America, you get everybody from Argentina and Brazil, and Paraguay. They're there, right? I don't think I, I that that competition. I I think I probably fought six times. You know, I was I was I felt like I was fighting all day, two rounds two minutes, everybody's, and, and I think like in South America, they allow a lot more contact, right? So I, I, I felt like I fought all day when by the end of the day, my, my knees were swollen, my ankles were swollen. I was in pain everywhere. Um, so there, when I won there, it was, it was I, I think I, I realized that at that time, okay, I do have what it takes to compete among the best. Because at the time, in the finals, I fought um, Bruno Fortado. He's from Brazil. He had won silver in the world championships prior to that. And and I was in Brazil and he's from Brazil. So fighting him and actually winning was a big thing, right? Because I mean, I, I I don't care what anybody says. He's the hometown hero. He's the favorite to win the division. The, it's already in his favor, you know, and yeah. we went to extra time, sudden death. And when we went to sudden death, I went all karate on him. Yeah. And that, that after that, and, and at that, at that championship, I could have, I was at that age where I could have fought as a junior or I could have fought as a senior. Like you just have to choose one that, yeah. And the coaches were like, you know what, go fight senior. We don't, you don't have anything to do here in junior ranks, just so go fight senior. So even that made it even more like, oh, maybe I yeah. can do this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Funny that though, because I thought, I think, and I think if you were to look at it, like the people who win, I'd love to, the, the, how many people are win at junior are 18 with a couple of tournaments points. You know what I mean? Like the ones who usually win, yeah. the ones who are like that, who are 18, but they can just fall in because they were 17 at the start of the year, I think. Right. Like a yeah, lot of yeah. times. That'll actually be the person who wins. So, like, you know, 
you you could you could have looked at it like you were giving up an opp- a really good opportunity to win a junior, but like to win make, exactly, you didn't yeah. make a difference in the end. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I think 2018 was a big year for me in terms of just like moving into that level of self belief for one, right? Like not not just a talent thing, just like self belief because at this point I knew what the quality of ITF competition was, you know, I, I knew it, so I, I knew. At that time, I was now picking my training up, doing extra work, making sure that I take care of myself, making sure that I fight the weight class that I, I think fits me best and I'm strong enough, but I'm not too weak. And uh, so so I had that figured out by that time. Yeah. And you were 63, you were 63 at that time, was it? Were you, were you 63? I was 63 at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 63 well, when time. did you change to 70 again? When did you move to minus? Uh, 70. I moved to 70 after World Cup in 2014. After 2014, I, I had to do um, shoulder surgery. And, and and then I was just like, you know what? I feel like I'm going to be a lot stronger if I fight 70. Like just like it was getting very hard to actually make the 63 weight class, you know, and I was feeling fatigued afterwards and I wasn't recovering fast enough. So like in in 2014 at the World Cup, I was injured. My shoulder was slipping out and all of that, right? But I found when I was in the individuals, I wasn't as strong as I was. And then by the time it came out for us to do the team, I was awake, I was vibing, I was buzzing because then of course I carved up and I'm stronger and I felt a lot better, right? So I, I could actually um, compete. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it's the time I spoke to the coaches and they're like, yeah, I think it's time you probably picked it up a little bit and give somebody else a chance to fight the 63 yeah yeah so then like have you won have you won the pan am games at 70 or, the, or have, you, have you won both divisions 63 and 70 yeah 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 i have i have won both i, I won 63 twice and then i won 70 once at the pan ams yeah yeah where, where were those where were those ones on what's out there uh, one was in Canada. The 63 was in Canada in 2012, and then Argentina in Argentina somewhere. I don't remember. 2017, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think 2017. Yeah, they're always yeah. massive ones. Like as the Argentina, like there's a lot of them. You know, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of people from these countries. I go to them. Yeah, trust me. There's so many competitors there, man. So many competitors there. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that was a, that was also a hard one. That was also a hard one. The, the one in Canada, um, it wasn't as difficult. I don't know. It's in North America, of course. All of South America isn't there. It wasn't that difficult. I, I mean, I did fight Julio in the finals. I mean, that that was probably the match that that um, that made it difficult because it was Julio. Um, yeah, yeah. Have you fought? You fought? You've competed against Julio a good lot of times, I would imagine. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I was always competing in North America, right? And and he's always there. Like every competition you go to, he's like, oh, Julio is here again. And then we're in the same division. We were in the same division at the time. So, yeah, yeah quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few. What, so then, like, what, what's what's Taekwondo like in terms of participation on a whole in, in Jamaica? Is, is it big or? It's, it's. Let's talk about pre-COVID, right? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's probably yeah. better. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a, it's a growing art still, right? But we have maybe registered members, maybe 500, 600 registered members pre-COVID, of course. You know, so um, it, I, I'd, I'd want to see it grow more. I, I think one of the major issues are, is because we tend to have to balance. Um, taekwondo and work like everybody's still working or like yeah we, we we have for a long time settled for okay we have three schools okay we just have three schools and there weren't like instructors coming from the schools right so we'd have competitors and people who are traveling abroad and compete but not people who are making other schools you know what i mean yeah so yeah. we were up until this moment when we're we actually the board actually decided, okay, listen, we need a program where we actually train instructors and coaches, not just the competitors, so we can have growth all over the country. So I think now it's spreading a lot more, right? Um, so those initiatives really, really help. Um, it's, it was on the up, you know, there's also this 
this um this split between the ITFs as well yeah. that is also causing some separation with okay how seeing the actual numbers of taekwondo because like like for me I, I don't care too much for the oh you do this you do, I want to compete against the best so yeah I want everybody to be one and we just then I'd really know if I'm actually good enough yeah that's a, that, that, that was actually a point that uh, Grandmaster Boss made when he was on that he'd like to see like instead of four, five, six, or ten world championships that he put it, could we have one world champion? And like I, I kind of said, the, like it's not the competitors who who will stop that. That the competitors want to compete against everybody. And yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, but like you said, it's people who above that who make the decisions. Yeah, don't want it's to people who that. make the decisions, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I think that's a bit everywhere. Like you, you can't put a, a a real number on how many people are in ITF in many countries because, like you said, there's so many yeah. ITF, yeah. so many. Yeah. Um. What, what, what's what's the kind of we'll just say taekwondo then versus like you said because like you have does the fight team there that train together is there like overall would karate be bigger than taekwondo would kickboxing or oh, like, where, where's no, that kind of compared taekwondo then? is definite ta- uh, well i want to say taekwondo is is bigger in terms of numbers or in terms of competing numbers right like because karate is in a lot of the grassroots the schools and the prep schools and stuff like that like i can't give a number on that sometimes some competitions you see a lot of karate people some competitions you see a lot of taekwondo people depending on what the instructor decides to go with right but in terms of um, popularity i would say taekwondo for sure um of course wt here isn't as big because wt in jamaica we don't they don't have the competitors to do it at the high level. And there's always this fight between, okay, he's actually an ITF guy. Oh no, he's a WT guy. We don't want the ITF guy because, you know, there's a whole lot of politics going on with that. Politics that, that I, I right now I'm banned from competing in the WT because I'm traditionally ITF guy. Yeah. Pretty much that's it. Yeah. So. But then in terms of like, so then Kenneth Edwards then, does he was he more traditional ITF or was he WT or the end crossover? Like, because obviously he was allowed to compete for a while as well, or has he been back? Like, we, were, we, 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 were, we, were, we were both competing yeah. um, in WT at the same time, right? But like, no, we, we, I remember a couple of years ago, he and I tried to get a uh, athlete's license for WT and we were just banned from accessing the system. Um, he, he's actually traditional karate. Yeah, that's what, he's, that's, what he's the, that's what he's doing at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's traditional karate. Then he came over to ITF. And then we were like, oh, ITF, he kicks very well. Let's do WT as well. And then so we do everything now, kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. He's somebody who could benefit because obviously he went, he was at the Olympics with WT or what, and then potentially, I don't know if, it, if it's going to work out, he could, could he get to the Olympics with karate, you know what I mean? It's... Yeah, 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 it's, uh, yeah, yeah. He's somebody, I suppose, that, who, who might benefit from the jumping across different disciplines. Yeah. Um, once he is, the, the thing is, I, I know the qualifiers are coming up for karate, right? And I think I see him, I saw the list of people who are supposedly going, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's on the list. Um, the thing is, like, 2012 for the Olympics, for the Olympic qualifiers, because I, I was at the Olympic qualifiers when he qualified for the Olympics. I know what, how he trained to go to the qualifiers. Not to go to the Olympics, just to go to the qualifiers, because that's a big thing, right? And I'm not sure, with the pandemic and everything, I'm not sure he's able to train the same okay. for this qualifiers for the karate, you know? Um I'm not sure he is able to do the same things. And by this time, I think he has done so much ITF and so much WT. It's almost like he's more ITF than even karate, even though he started in karate. Yeah. You know, he did so much ITF and WT competitions. He's more those than he is karate. Yeah. So if yeah, he's not going to do the work that he did, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So we'll see. And how did the Olympic qualifiers go for you then in terms of? Did you get closer? Yeah, I, 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 I lost sudden death for the last spot to go to the Olympics in '68. So it was um, I fought two fights and then I went to the 
the semi-finals and I lost at the semi-finals and then only three people were chosen to go so, so yeah so how did they pick the last spot so obviously you had the winner they, in second place and then there was who the, the winner of the the lose the person who lost the first place person okay okay yeah Oh, that's a shame they didn't let them to just the third place fight it's, off like you've heard, isn't it? I know, that right? That would have made more yeah. sense. That would have made so much more sense. Especially because, like you see it all the time, like I can, I, I understand the thinking, you know. But... No, they changed that now, though. They changed that now. Oh, right, okay. so I'm looking at it now and I'm like, yeah. hell, yeah. you know. Because like, I understand the thinking. It does a bit of logic yeah, to it. Yeah, I but, understand. But at the end of the day, there's no logic when it actually comes to the way it plays out. Because yeah, because you don't know. The, you don't yeah. actually know. And yeah. the styles make the yeah. fight, so... Who knows, yeah. you know, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's a shame, wasn't it? That was a shame. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I cried for that loss. I, I, I don't think I'll ever lost and not, and cried since maybe I have, but that one was a massive blow. Yeah. That yeah. A massive blow. Yeah. Chance for the Olympics is a, is a big one. That's, that, yeah. that, that would have been a big one. So then in terms of then the, the Iskars, when did you have won quite a few of them ones as well? Iskars kick. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've I've um I've been to a few, so <laughs> winning a few. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, so I want to tell you, uh, my first ISCA competition. It was right after a ITF World Championships. I think I think it was, I want to say Italy. I'm not sure. I fought at the. It was probably Spain. I remember it very well. It was Spain, maybe 2016, maybe. I think I don't know. World and I was in, in the World Championships in, in Spain, yeah, in Benidorm. Uh, 2013. 2013, yes. I'm like, yeah. 16? That seems so close. 2013, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I was very disappointed in that championship, right? Because I, I remember I had I was in New York a month or so before the championships, and I fought Julio. And we fought in the finals in, in, in New York, and I won. So I was very confident going to the World Championships because I felt really good going to Spain. And then I fought Julio again in Spain and I lost to Julio in Spain. So I was like, ah, oh, what this back and forth thing. So I wanted to really prove a point going to the Iscas because we were leaving from Spain and we were going to Netherlands right away for the Iscas. And we, we went over and I'm like, okay, ITF stuff, nothing's good. I've never fought this before. Then I just realized, oh no, this is kickboxing. Guys be taking hits and they're just coming in like train wreck. And you're like, oh, and then like, yeah. I was so fatigued. I was like, oh. when, when I finished the finals, I was, I legit had to lay down for like half an hour before I recovered. My chest was just, yeah. But, but yeah, I, I think I've, I've won maybe four since because then I understood the rules more. It was one of those eye-opening moments again for me, you know, where, where I was coming from the ITF World Championships, I was feeling good. I was like, I'm going to cakewalk this, um, this Iska thing. But yeah. I was that, that was like contact, like the continuous. Have you, have you done, have you done the points? Yeah. Have you done the points? I've done all of them. I've, yeah. I've, I've won points. I've won continuous. I've won more continuous. So I think I only won points once. Yeah. Yeah. That's after it, I suppose. That you feel like the karate background, and that's, that's what yeah, you know, yeah. kind of comes into play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah. Play, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never done points. I've done continuous a few times, but I've never done points. Um, may, maybe when maybe when we get back, get back competing, I might jump into the points yeah. and, and jump well, into you know, points. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Take all the chances I can because yeah, you know, you we, never know. You know when you're gonna stop again. <laughs> uh, especially yeah. now, like it's it's twelve months this weekend since I last competed I got a competition in right before kind of the whole world just went into shutdown um, yeah. so I comp competed in London uh, this Saturday so I yeah this Saturday last year so maybe actually no it was last Saturday so it was just over oh, a year yeah, yeah. Just so, over uh, I don't think I I competed once since Australia and it was yeah competed once after no not after Australia no in 2019 I when was Australia uh, 2018, I think, yeah. 2018. Kind of October or September 2018. Did we have anything in, what was 2019? Uh, there was World Championships in, in Germany. I don't, I don't think you were there, were you? Were you there? Oh, no, no. 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 Didn't get to that one. Really? Yeah. Was that in Germany? I don't know. Work, maybe. Work commitments. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And, uh, 
yeah. So like, and then you've done wacko as well at times. Is is wacko big in in Jamaica or is it is it just kickboxing kind of? Or as wacko is very 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 small. Very, it's almost non-existent now. To be honest, it's very very small here. Um, not a lot of funding. I I like wacko actually. Um, I, I it's it's almost like like so. It, Iska for me, it's the guys are very strong. They're tough. They, but it's it's not they're not as um, technical as the Wako and ITF fighters. You know they can give a good hit. Yeah. But I think like Wako and ITF are a good blend. My issue now with ITF is I think it's a little bit soft, and then Wako gives that balance of hitting and not brawling. That, that's what I like with Waco. Because like now I go into ITF, you know, I, I was, I, you will, I just think you do a solid punch. It's a solid punch. It should be okay, right? Once it's not tearing the guy's head off and the nose isn't bloody and stuff. Like, I, I think it should be like, go. I think right now it's a little bit soft and I, I don't know what contact is okay contact. What's this? What, so, so Waco gives a good idea of exactly where I'd like it to be. Guys aren't brawling. Guys are really fighting and you have to really use here. And then you can give and you can take some, you know? So yeah, yeah. I like, I like Waco. I've only do, done two Wako. Like I did the Worlds in maybe 17 when we couldn't get visas to come to Ireland. So we weren't in Ireland. Oh, right. We couldn't okay. get visas. And then, so we went to the Wako Worlds. Um, so I got bronze there and then um, did a Panam Games or something like that for Wako as well. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Like, I quite with the kind of contacting. I kind of tend to agree with you a little bit there. I I I would like to see the contact let go a little bit more. Um, yeah. I do feel the referees are in it. Are in it. it I feel sort of times it's stopped too much. I feel like we're stopping a lot. I'd like to see. Yeah. The action. It, it let go a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree. Especially. I, I said this to the last. I think I think it was um, Master Van Van der Mart, I said it to was that. Uh, like it does a lot of the referees stopping in and just waving off and uh, like no warnings, no minus points, and then going again. Yeah. It's like, well, why did you stop then if there was why nothing? did you stop it? Yeah, yeah. so, so I'd like to, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd like to just see the action go a bit more and, and just just let, 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 let the fighters kind of work it out, like it'll sort itself out. You know, you don't need to be in all the time, and and even like if, yeah. two, if there is like a coming together of a clash, like, like, see, can they work out from that? Like, you don't have to be straight in and separate, they separate themselves out. Them themselves you yeah. Know? So yeah, yeah, yeah i'd like to see it yeah. go a bit more yeah maybe the contact go a little bit more as well like you said if it's not especially when um like if it's an even match you kind of want to see it like if there's one person who's you know, yeah who's, running away but then they're taking a bit of liberty like they're clearly four and off and then they're just kind of you know they're, they're taking a piss a small bit you know what i mean like like yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know maybe yeah. but relax but if it's two guys and it's fairly even and the scores are even like like leave it go like at, at the world championships in germany um Sebastian from Argentina was fighting Bartosz from Poland in, in the plus 85 division first round and like like the contact it was even there was punches some fly they were flying you know and yeah, yeah, yeah. and they both ended up then with two minus points and they're both then walking on eggshells then for the last couple of seconds yeah, yeah, the last 30 exactly. seconds because like you can't take a chance whereas like it was even it was you know just just let them at it it's first round of the world championships just just leave them at it you know yeah. and see what happens yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it is a bit of a shame I know, I know. Yeah. I, 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 I remember in, in, in Australia, Kenneth got disqualified in Australia, right? And uh, I, I saw him get a minus point for doing a, a turning kick to the stomach. You know, and I'm like, how do you get a minus point for kicking somebody to the stomach? Come on. You know, so like, for me, I was like, yeah. come on. That, so, yeah. 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 It's, it's but like if the, if the person you're against can't take a turning kick to the stomach, then like they shouldn't they shouldn't be there. You shouldn't be getting they, a, a minus yeah. point to disqualify. That means they shouldn't have been there in the first they place. They shouldn't been there exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If if this is a, a corner league tournament down the road where everybody comes, I can understand, right? But when this is the biggest competition in the world, where the best of the best are expected to come and perform, then if you can't take a turning kick to the stomach, then you probably shouldn't be performing at this level. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Do you, do you think? Do you think that Jamaica will ever have a team, a, a big team? Like, I know it's a lot of times it's it's quite a the smaller teams. They're one of the smaller teams. Do you think you'll get to a point where 
you get to maybe not maybe not a big team but a, a medium sized team where you get 40, 35, 40 competitors. You know, a, a big part of it is funding, right? Like, like it's expensive to travel to everywhere from Jamaica. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I hope nobody from New Zealand is listening and saying, "Oh, oh, you should see New Zealand." But like, one, the economy is small. Like, the the, the funding just isn't there. That's the thing. Like, I think most of our funding comes from either people self-funding themselves or one sponsor. You know, like even the association trying to fund people, it, they just don't have enough either. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's one of the reasons why our teams are generally very small. Like in, in England, that's that we had maybe five girls, seven girls, seven boys, uh, three coaches, uh, and maybe three umpires. I think that is going to be probably the biggest team we will see in Jamaica, f- and, and, uh, unless it's in Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's probably going to be the biggest team we, we go. And unless it goes to like, like, like uh, the US. If, 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 if one of the competitions go to the US, then maybe. But like for Europe or, or going to South America or stuff like that, it's, it's really, really expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. yeah. Like you said, the... Um... It's the one we see. We, we, Ireland don't have it like that quite as much, but you see, like the guys that like in mainland Europe, and they can fly and they can do do, do the kickboxing tournaments. They can go to the taekwondo tournaments, and they can just drive or drive there. Yeah, like, right. Spend right, yeah. 10, 12 hours driving, compete, and then drive home. And then drive and, home. You yeah. know, and it's it's not a problem, and they can do that a couple of weekends in a row. Or every second weekend, and it's not a problem. Yeah, for, like like yeah. for us, like if you want to get lots of competition and kind of do the uh, a big circuit, it gets expensive, and then there's time off work and all that sort of stuff. Like you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, we we definitely don't have it probably as hard. We definitely don't have it as hard as Jamaica might have it to to get to these places, but like we do have it a small bit to some degree. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but yeah, like I said, I think New Zealand maybe they they, they probably yeah, yeah, have, they, it, they have it the they, worst. They, 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 Oh yeah, oh yeah. New Zealand, Australia, they they probably be like, <sighs> but like also like the, the exchange rate and the economy is also a big thing, right? Like the 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 our dollar compared to every other dollar on the planet, I'm sure, it just keeps falling and falling and falling and falling, and so that that's also a big part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, in terms of like a training schedule. How do you balance training? Like, what, 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 how many sessions? Like, if you're, I suppose, you're, 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 you're training for a World Cup or World Championships, how many sessions a week are you usually getting in? Uh, so, so when I when I was in Jamaica, when I was living in Jamaica and I was training under our coach, we would train five times a week with him, and then homework training, and we would rest. We'd try to rest about two days. Most times it'll be one because homework would like take up that training session that day. But yeah. we'll try to train under the coach for five days and then rest. And then we'll we'll probably adjust it like depending on how far away we are from the competition or how close we are to the competition, the type of training would be adjusted and stuff as well. So yeah, five let's say five days. Let's just leave it at five days and not get into what the changes would be and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So then in terms of like like the the home training, the home, would, would that be mostly just trying to condition kind of stuff or would it would you be doing that yourself or yeah, 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 yeah. Just kind of like condition, strength work, stuff like that, you know. Um watching yeah videos and stuff just to see what's going on, see what your foot what you are doing with your foot, what we want to change and stuff so you can try to come back in the training and try to implement what whatever, right? Like w- w- when I'm training with cause Kenneth and I trained a lot with Master Bernard from the US. Um, when we're com- when we're training and trying to prepare for like the world championships and stuff, our training would be like a session, like a kickboxing strength session is like more cardio or strength kickboxing. And then we'll finish off with some bag work and stuff. And then we'd have uh, training with just us. So the first session would have other people, then it would just be a training with us in the afternoon or so. And then we'd have a sparring training session. And um, so there'd be like three training sessions a day. But at that time when we were training with him, we we're abroad, you know, we we're in New York. We we're there to okay. just train, yeah. you know. So we, we, we get that in and we have two, one full rest day and then another day when we just do like one session in the morning and then the rest of the day off. So we'll be training six days. Yeah. 
So yeah. how, do you, how, how do you find that then? I suppose balancing life with, with with training and trying to compete and have have a competitive career where where there's no funding. Let's say it's it's tough. Yeah, yeah, that that that's that's very very tough. Um, like initially when you know I was going to school, it was a lot easier. I mean, I mean, I must say that traveling and competing really affected my first degree uh, so because a lot of times I was because we, we traveled to the U.S. a lot to compete you know um, so a lot of times I was away from school and had to depend on exams to pass my my, my courses and stuff um, so so I had to learn how to balance it and how to create a schedule and follow it like that, that's that's one thing that I, I have to do right now because right now I'm, I'm doing a YouTube page I am, I am instructing doing cardio kickboxing. I'm trying to keep myself ready to compete. Um, I'm working. I do have a day job, so I have to fit all of that in. And and as as a creator, content creator, you know, like how editing can be like time consuming as well. So I yeah, just have sure. to like really have that schedule where I'm like, okay, listen, this needs to be done by this time. This needs to be that. Needs to be that, and put it together so I make sure that I get everything or most of everything yeah yeah there's a lot of other stuff yeah like there is a lot of other stuff i suppose that i go into to go into it that people don't see you know it's uh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah they listen yeah. to the podcast or they watch the videos and uh there's a lot of other bits that that that, that go into it as well that, that don't see that, take that time. people don't see like the planning for it the setup of it making it happen and then after it happens like making sure it is presentable for the viewers and stuff. Yeah, people don't see all of that work that goes in. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of your YouTube channel, I, I'm right, it's, it's kind of a fitness, like kind of follow along, fitness classes, kind of a, yeah. a vibe. Is that, am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's what I started out with, you know, when the pandemic hit. Um, I and, and they closed down everything in Canada and Jamaica. I wanted... I, I just wanted a, a way for myself to train, right? So what I really needed was accountability partners. So I said, okay, guys, here's a free Zoom class that we're going to just work out online, cardio kickboxing, right? And then I realized that a lot of people joined in. And then it kept me accountable. Like sometimes I don't want to train, but I know people are going to show up and I'm like, ah, oh, darn, I got to show up. Yeah. And then from that, I was like, you know what? I'm here doing this. I'm just going to start a YouTube channel. And because my wife does YouTube, right? She's, but not exercise or anything like that. Just like um, Canadian immigration stuff, right? And she's like, you know, you should just do a YouTube channel, have people when they can make the times, they have something to follow on. So it started like that with just, um, fitness work along kind of thing but i think now i want to like integrate it into like have some training vlogs in there show some of my training stuff what do i do when i'm training how the vibes is when i train and stuff like that so but so it's now two sections where i try to do that vlog and teaching have people learning something and then that workout section where people can follow along and do some stuff so oh. yeah yeah, cool. So it's all, sounds good. There's nobody really, I suppose, in that taekwondo kind of in the taekwondo space, or like you know, doing a YouTube channel a vlog, kind of you know, showing you about yeah. their day. So yeah, it could be good. Right. It could be uh, yeah, could be, good, could be good to see. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll give it a watch. I've given some of the fitness uh, stuff. Like I gave it a, a look, and um, to, to see what you're at, you know, because yeah, it's part, part of the research on this end, you know. Yeah, see. yeah, of course, of course. Of so, course uh, yeah, yeah, so some of those vlogs, yeah, that'd be that, that could be something that could be good. Yeah, and um, yeah. I suppose then like. You've pretty won, I suppose, pretty much everything except the world championships, which I suppose is the big one. Would you say that's yeah? yeah would you yeah, say that's yeah, the goal? For sure. That's the goal going forward. That, that, that the is the goal. I'm I'm trying to. I I think it it may be a mental thing. I think I may have a little mental block, um, because I, I I was looking back recently on my major championships, like the whether it's the the World Cup or the world championships itself or the um the wacko world championships i find like when i get to the semi-finals i think something changes i'm trying to figure that out because i i've consistently been losing at the semi-finals i don't know what it is um so that's something for me that's really like really on my mind like what is happening here um that's the big one that is definitely definitely the big one that i need to get over that hurdle and, and, and get that medal, you know, like, I, I think one, one of the reasons why, like people keep 
people keep asking me, so when do you think you're going to stop? It, it's so hard to know, like, stop. Like, I can't stop. Like, this goal, this thing that I've set out to win hasn't happened yet. You know, like, I, I haven't done it yet. And I think 2015, 2015. Sarah, where was the World Championship? Was it in Italy? Yeah, just low in Italy, 2015. yeah. 2015. You I Ireland. think that... What's that? Yeah, you fought against Ireland. I think you. you I, I lost yeah. to Ireland. Yeah, yeah to, yeah, to Dylan. Dylan. Yeah, I, I lost to Dylan, and I think that championship, I felt so good in that championship. So, so like even now, I was like, it's it's probably the best I felt in a championship. So, and the fact that I still went, I mean, no disrespect to Dylan or anything, he's fantastic and all right, but I still went to the semifinals and lost to Dylan. You know what I mean? And. I, I I never I felt like I, I legit felt like I couldn't lose going into the championship. Not that it's so, and I, and it's not like an arrogant thing. Or I just felt so prepared and so ready for that championship. But still, I went in there and I still lost by. It, it was a small margin, but at the end of the day, I was on the wrong side of the small margin. Yeah, you know what I mean. So for me, it was. It, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I was really looking forward to this year, to see see what's up because I feel fitter I feel stronger now so I was hoping that COVID would have given us a chance to do something yeah maybe maybe towards the end of the year do you think it's kind of a you start to realize maybe when you get to the semi-final you start thinking like I'm close do you think that's kind of that kind of a thing or you feel like the pressure kind of goes up a small bit or I think so I, I, I think I start to pressure myself thinking okay I'm two fights away you know, yeah. I, I think I, I start to think about that too much instead of just like fighting the match that's there, you know, and I, I think like I try, I start to try too hard and my fighting style changes and I lose my form. I, I've seen that. Right? That's what I see on some of the videos. Like even in Australia, the same thing happened. I was, I felt good. I was doing good through the rounds. I was very relaxed. I think when I get to the semifinals, I get really tense. And when I start getting tense, I start to try to hit harder. I, I, and that, I lose my form, and I, I think that's messing me up. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually working on that. Not, not um, playing or, or not fighting the atmosphere, or the environment, or the stage, but like just fighting the match as the match is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I definitely had that to some degree myself. Like, not, like getting to the, I got to the European finals, the championship finals, kind of first two times. First two times I was there, and. I think like yeah. that, I was kind of thinking going into it when you got there, it's like, oh, I want to win the Euros, Euro, I'm going to be European champion. And that's kind of playing your mind a little bit more. So then, yeah, yeah. and you're not fully focused on the match and then the match is gone and you've lost. And then but like, yeah. by, by yeah. the time it came around to the third time, I was more so like, it's just another match and you just have to beat the person that's there and you have just have to win it. this match. It's like everything else that goes with it kind of doesn't make a difference. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just, it's just win one match and then that's it you know that's kind of so I kind of I, I do kind of understand what you mean there like yeah the, you start to think like yeah, yeah. Start to, you start to feel like the, the match means more when more maybe, yeah when it's exactly when, yeah. you know it's just it, maybe it's just yeah. another match that right, needs to be in your head yeah yeah, yeah. like I, I get there and I start to fight the world championships you know like oh yes this, I'm fighting the world championships like in that moment it needs to be my opponent and this match and I, I think that's something I'm working on yeah so I suppose maybe just before we finish up, and um, I tend to ask everybody if you had to pick a favorite fighter to watch, who would you pick? Mm. It doesn't have to necessarily be a taekwondo fighter. It could be if you like maybe a boxer, maybe an MMA fighter, a kickboxer. If you had to pick just one fighter that you like to one watch in a sport, fighter, who would it be? Man. You know, oof. we might let you away with a few as well. If you if if there's two, okay. or, if there's two <laughs> or three you want to name, we we'll leave you away with two or three. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching, I mean, this may seem a little bit biased, but I love watching Kenneth fight. I think I I get nervous when Kenneth fights. I don't know, but I love watching him fight. But outside of Jamaican fighter, I think my favorite fighter to watch, and this may be a little bit weird, is actually Julio Carlos. Because he's, he's he has been a, a big part rivalry, you know, yeah. in terms of competition and stuff. But I think like watching him fight, he's, he's, he's very entertaining. He's he he so entertaining. He's good entertainment. So, yeah. so entertaining. Yeah. Um, so I think to watch, he's probably one of my favorite, favorite fighters to watch for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's, the, he's come up a few times. Yeah. So yeah, he's definitely, I enjoy watching Julio. I think everybody has. I've always enjoyed watching Julio. 
But uh, yeah. yeah, so some good picks there. Yeah, like I said, yeah, your buddy and training partner Kenneth and Julio. Yeah, two good yeah, picks. Yeah. So uh, That's my guys. Yeah, like I think we'll leave it there. Thanks, man, for coming on. I've, I've enjoyed the chat. Enjoyed oh, hearing wait, your story. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. One more. One more. Hung. I got it. Hung. Hung. Hung Lu. Ah, I love watching Hung yeah. as well. Yeah. He's my from ever since like years, and I saw him fight for the first time. Just his timing and his hands. The entire Jamaican team was like. Yeah, he's exciting to watch as well. Yeah, we're like, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love watching Hong as well. Yeah, yeah, and had a had a had a long career as well. So as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my he's own. an inspiration to me now because, like, the other day I was like, okay, I'm 31 now. Um, am I might get on the older side of stuff? And then I saw him won the European Championship, and I'm like, mm, thanks, buddy. You just yeah. made it for me. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I yeah. felt like that. I'm 26, and I felt like that a couple of times last year or so. I was like, Jesus, I'm one of the older guys here. But yeah, uh, yeah you're seeing Hong still winning, so I was like, all right, there's, there, there's still more that you can do, you know. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Another good pick. So uh, yeah, thanks, man, for coming on, man. I really enjoyed hearing your story, hearing about hearing how kind of Taekwondo is and the martial arts kind of working in Jamaica, and uh, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your plans going forward. So yeah, thanks, man, for yeah. giving your time. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll get back to competing soon and uh, we won't be in lockdown I'll see you. too long. Yeah, I hope so, man. Yeah, for sure. Good man. Take to care. see you. All, All right, take care, bud. Have a good one. Bye. A reminder to check out today's sponsors, TKD Wear at tkdwear.com and use the promo code BLACKBELTER for 10% off. All details are in the description. And see you next week.